Hey everybody and welcome to the lounge on my fellow loungers, chillers, ballers, and grillers. And gamers. And gamers. <laughs> because today, as you saw in the title, we are going to be making Pearson's Beef Stew from Red Dead Redemption 2. This is a game that I like, really love and I'm actually replaying it right now. Uh, because at the end of the month, the original Red Dead Redemption is finally being ported to PC. And I thought to celebrate, I would make the stew from camp and I've been wanting to make it for a long time. And uh, if you want to find the full recipe and the instructions that we're going to be following along with, that will be in the description as well as the pinned comment. Um, but we're going to get right started right away. And what is one of the first things that we need to do? First, we have here an onion. Onion. Carrots. Carrots. Celery and mushrooms, and now we're gonna take each one and chop them up. Oh wait, we forgot to wash all this stuff. Okay, w w one sec, one sec. <laughs> all right, so now that we've gotten all of our vegetables chopped up, we are going to move on to the meat section. For this recipe, um, usually you would use like bear meat or venison and maybe some rabbit but I'm just gonna stick with the beef for today. You can also add chicken if you want but this is what I have. Um, at Whole Foods they actually had pre-chopped chuck beef which is um, really convenient and I got around I think a pound and a half of this meat and I'm pretty sure that you could just get away with getting only a pound but yeah. I, I wanted a lot of meat so yeah, so it helps that this is already chopped because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this um, mix. You're gonna wanna get flour and mix it with salt, pepper, and garlic salt if you want, that one is optional. I'm not sure how much you exactly need, just enough to coat your meat here. So while she's getting the plate, I'm gonna put uh, a whole bunch of salt in here because you want like equal parts, at least for the seasoning. And now, we're gonna take Pepper. that in there. All right, stop. <laughs> cool. And we're gonna, I guess, I don't have a spoon, so just mix this in. We have both washed our hands before this, so we are going to now put the meat inside of here. You can start recording. Um, now that we have all the meat coated, vegetables chopped, that is all the prep work that we need to do. Now let's take it to the kitchen. All right, so now that I have my apron on that I totally forgot to put on at the beginning of the video, uh, I have the pot that I've preheated to become heaping hot so then that way the meat can brown. Before that, we're gonna take the vegetable oil and then if you wanna get an inside shot right here, just gonna add that and you don't want to like put too much just enough to kind of settle in there and then just get that all around okay good and now we are going to take our meat and then kind of just add each one of them inside of the pot of course we're not cooking these directly we're only searing them and uh, I'm gonna use the tongs to flip them all right and uh, depending on how big your pot is, you might have to do this in two batches. Um, maybe I'll have enough room, but we'll see. Yeah, how about we'll start with that, and then we'll, we're gonna do the second half afterwards. So, you hear that that's already starting to sear up, and that's what we want. And then we'll take our tongs. Just, you know, just kinda like look over it, flipping them. Making sure each side gets time on the bottom. Now I'm gonna bring this down to medium heat because it was on high first. Okay, and once that side has seared, just wanna flip each piece. Another side. And just repeat this process until it's all seared around. And if you look at the bottom, you'll kinda see that there's already some fawn that's starting to accumulate at the bottom of the pot. That's what we want, because then it's gonna help with sweating our vegetables. 
Okay, so these are pretty much done. So I'm gonna take these out and then I'm gonna do the same exact thing with our second batch. So we've got our beef all nice and seared. Our next step is adding our vegetables to saute with the fond. And basically we're just gonna do like a saute sweat until the edges become translucent. And you can kind of see the fun sticking to the onions. That's another thing that we'd like. Cool. So with our onions now sauteed, we're going to add the chopped celery. As well as our chopped garlic. Now you could do around like two cloves of garlic if you want. Um, I knew that we had this at home, so I just used this instead. Cool. You're gonna want to keep this up for maybe like a minute, three minutes. Now that the fragrance has really started to come out of these, we are going to take our chicken stock about four cups of it. Uh, you could do beef stock, but I ended up going with the chicken, and that's because I was gonna put two chicken drumsticks with the meat, but I thought that the chicken stock would do. And here we go. And this is the main deglazing process that is going to act with the fond. It also serves as the base for the stew itself and it's later going to be joined with around two tomatoes, two crushed tomatoes. So I'm basically painting the bottom of the pot to get all the good stuff out. This is gonna be good. So now that we've let the stock come to a simmer, we are going to add back our seared beef right into here. I wish the people could smell how yeah. good this smells. It smells so good. All right, cool. keep, that, keep that recording. All right. We're just gonna get all that in there. And then we're going to add our crushed tomatoes. The whole thing. The whole thing. Sure. Yeah. Just mix that around. We're gonna add our thyme leaves and then season with rosemary. Just so I can eyeball how much we want to put in there. All right. It's been about three minutes and we've brought it to a boil. We're gonna cover this, bring it to a medium heat simmer and we are going to leave this for an hour and a half. So we've got some time. All right, Jason, while we're waiting for the stew to simmer, I have a quiz for you and asking you some questions. Okay. I'm looking at a list of all 24 Vanderlyn gang members, and I want you to tell me their name and their occupation. Okay, so I have to name all of them for memory and what they do? Yeah, what, what you said. Well, of course, we have Arthur Morgan, and he is the head gunman of the camp. We have Dutch, who is the co-founder and leader of the gang. We have Hosea, who is second in command and co-founder. There's Micah, who's a gunman. There's Charles, who's gunman and hunter. We have Bill, Sean, and Lenny, who are all gunmen. There's John Marston, who is a gunman. Okay. Abigail Roberts, who is a thief, handmaid, and former camp sex worker. Jack Marston, who is John and Abigail's son. We have Pearson, who is the camp butcher and cook, and the guy that I'm getting this recipe off of. We have Trelawney, who is a con man. We have Kieran, who is, um, Technically, he's a gunman, but he's more of like the camp stable boy, which is there. Um, oh gosh. We have Uncle, who is a thief. We have nine left. 
and I left. Oh, we have Strauss, and he is the accountant, bookkeeper, and La loan shark, I believe they call him, scammer guy. Karen, who is a thief and um, gun woman. Yeah. And, oh, and handmaid. Well, I mean, yeah, that's good. She's more of a gun woman than she is handmaid, but oh, she okay. also does that. Uh, we have Tilly, and she's also a uh, handmaid. Sadie Adler, gun woman, former handmaid. This, um, Swanson, who is the camp priest and freeloader. How many do I have left? One, two, three, four. I have four left? Yes. Oh gosh. Molly, who is Dutch's wife. Oh, um, Mrs. Grimshaw, who is the camp coordinator and administrator. Okay. We have Mary Beth, who is a handmaid. Yep. And what, two left? One more. One more? Uh, who am I missing? The boy. The boy? Hmm. The role that they have in camp, do they share it with anyone else or is this like a specific role? They share it with people in camp. Okay. Are they a gunman? Yes. They are a gunman, okay. Uh, okay, so the gunman. We have Micah, we have Arthur, we have Sean, Lenny, Bill. Is it Bill? Nope. I, I said, said him. Um, it's not Lenny, I said Lenny. Gosh, uh, everyone's like screaming at me right now to say like, Ooh. <laughs> do they die in the end? What? I don't know. You wanna know? Oh, it's Javier. Yeah. Javier. Yes. Good. Gunman Javier. <laughs> yes. Nice. All right. So yeah, those are the 24 gang members of Vanderlyn. And yeah. Yep. Looks like I got it. You did it. Ooh. It's been about one hour and 30 minutes and this has been going for quite a while as you can see and I would say every like 15 minutes I've given this a stir just to make sure all the ingredients are loose in there and I was able to taste some of the broth and you are probably gonna have to salt to taste. But now, the next ingredient is the carrots and mushrooms. So we're gonna, oh, there's my timer. Oops, carrots. Oops, there's some, uh-oh. I'm trying to roll away. Oh, I'm dropping carrots. Do you want to just like use your hand to just... No, that's alright. And then, of course, the chopped mushrooms. Awesome. Give that a nice stir. Make sure it's all in there. The carrots and mushrooms in there. We are going to bring this back to a simmer and let that sit for 30 minutes. It is night time now. Night. <laughs> yeah, so as you can see, the stew takes quite a while to prepare. Um, yeah, that sun has gone down, so plan accordingly if you're following along with this tutorial. Uh, but yeah, as you saw, we just added the carrots and mushrooms. And now, while we wait for 30 minutes on that, we're going to chop our potatoes. And the reason we didn't do this before with all the other vegetables is because if you let the potatoes sit out for too long, they're going to start to oxidize and turn brown. So that's why I recommend that you do it while you're waiting. Yeah, let's do it. And you don't have to do this all fancy or anything. I, I'm just gonna do slices. You could also cut them into quarters or wedges, whatever you want. It's all going to the same place. Cutting potatoes with a friend, it's mandatory that you do it like this. Wait. <laughs> nice. So, what do you think? Alright, well, technically the recipe didn't call for four potatoes. I was just kind of eyeballing it when I was watching Binging with Babish. And I wrote down the number four because I like potatoes and I wanted a lot of potatoes in there. 
but this is when we realized this might be a lot of potatoes and it might not fit in the pot because there's already a whole bunch of ingredients in there. Yeah, so. I don't physically think. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we split it and yeah, then... Yeah, okay, so maybe for this recipe, if you're following along, only get two. And yeah. by the time you're watching this, I will have already edited the recipe that you're reading in the description. Yeah. Um, okay, well, it looks like half of the potatoes are gonna oxidize anyway when I save them in the fridge. But that's huh. alright. Maybe we could figure out a way to... Could we cut them up and make them into fries or something? Is, oh, there, a yeah. is there a fry recipe? <laughs> that could be fun. Or we could... I'm not sure if it'll make a difference, but we could cut these potatoes into even smaller pieces to make them fit better, that makes sense. Maybe. You know, we'll trial and error and see what comes from it, and uh, you'll obviously find out whatever we decide. So. Yeah, well, we're gonna add the potatoes in three minutes, because that's right. how much time we have left on the carrots and mushrooms, so see right. you then. Wish us luck. Cool, and yes, this is the last ingredient. So then, after we add these, we have to wait 30 more minutes for potatoes to cook, and then we could finally enjoy. It's definitely uh, taking on a stew-like texture. It's still like liquidy in the broth, but with all these ingredients in there, it's getting good. Yeah, that should be a good amount. Maybe, maybe I'll add like a, like a small third more potatoes, but even then, that's yeah. already a lot. Simmer for 30 minutes. Later, we are finally here for a taste test. Yeah, I'm gonna start with the beef. Yeah, I'm trying to. You're still hot? Mmm. 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 Wow. I think it came out really good. I was worried that the um, that the sauce on the. <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> I was worried that the sauce and the broth were gonna kind of be flavorless because I was saying how you needed to <laughs> you needed to salt to taste, but it actually came out really good. And I don't know what's happening right now. <laughs> Here, let me concentrate on the bowl. Mmm, <laughs> mm. carrots are nice and soft. It was good. Let's try the potatoes. Ooh, the carrots are like sweet. Mmm. Oh yeah. Once again, I followed Binging with Babish's recipe, and um, I kind of had to like, do my own measurements for things because um, he only kind of showed the ingredients. But yeah, it came out really good. Again, if you want to try it for yourself, the description has the instructions and recipe as well as the pinned comment down below. And um, yeah, do you want to try it? Yeah. Okay, here. Wait, have some bite. Okay. You want me to film you or not? No. <laughs> <laughs> Your battery's low. I know. Dang. So good. I've been wanting to make this I kid you not, for maybe like two years, but I kept procrastinating on it, and I was like, oh yeah, maybe the winter time, blah, 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 this and that, but I finally did it, so good. We have to do it again. Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna keep enjoying our camp stew. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you do end up trying this recipe for yourself, please let me know, and maybe send me a picture on Instagram, and yeah, because I want to know how it turned out for you. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Remember when I used to do that? Mm -hmm.